Hello and welcome to physicsworld.com. I'm Joe McEntee, Group Editor at IOP Publishing, and I'm here at the MRS Fall Meeting in Boston to talk to Ian Robertson, Incoming Director at the National Science Foundation's Division of Materials Research. In 2011, the DMR is planning to spend just shy of $320 million on advanced materials R&D, making it one of America's biggest and most important backers of materials science and technology innovation. Thanks for joining us, Ian. Well, thanks for inviting me, Joe. Thank you. So, given the sluggish economic climate, what are your priorities near and long term when you take the reins, reins as DMR director in January? So, it's a good question. It's one that, since I started at taking this job, uh, it's one I've been thinking about. It's also one that where lots of my friends and colleagues have been giving me lots of advice. Uh, their advice, though, sort of says, well, the research contracts are too small. Their success rate is too small. What are you going to do to fix it? And, of course, you add that to the sort of sluggish economic climate, the uncertainty and the funding, and you have sort of quite a problem. So I think one of the first things that I'm going to do is work with the DMR staff uh, to look through and prioritize the areas that we actually fund. DMR supports a wide range of activities, and I think we need to look at the areas, determine which ones are critical and our top priorities, and then fund them at a level that is appropriate so that the, the researchers can get their work done properly. At a more granular level, what, what are the hot topics in growth areas for DMR funding in, in 2011 and beyond? So there are some new initiatives that are in SF-wide in which DMR is participating. Uh, one of the new initiatives is in uh, nanoelectronics 2020 and beyond. And they, the goal for this is to try and take us beyond the breakdown in Moore's law in, in terms of for computation. The other areas in photovoltaics, we have new initiatives coming in those areas. I think data-enabled science, we are generating more and more data especially from some of the experiments that we have these days. And we're going to have to learn how to handle it, how to store it, how to manipulate it, how to analyze it. And I think those are going to be growth areas for DMR, it's areas we're going to have to focus on. So in, in terms of how that science gets done, the, the DMR is also backing a new initi initiative to encourage high risk, high payoff interdisciplinary research. Can, can you tell me more about that program? So the program really is, uh, a sort of revision of a, a previous program, and that program was the Materials Research Science and Engineering Centres. Based on a re recommendations from a study that was done, uh, the DMR decided that they would change the program and split it into two components. The first component is the, the Centres of Excellence for Materials Research and Innovation. The second part is the Materials Interdisciplinary Research Teams. The difference really is in the size of the program. The, Centres will probably be funded at anywhere above a million to four million dollars. I think the, the teams are more under a million. They'll only focus on one topic, whereas the centres will have three or four topics that they're going to focus on. The primary aim is going to be on innovative, high-risk research, and they share that goal in common. But it really is a, a reconfiguration of a previous programme, but mu a much better one, in my opinion, because it does take away some of the requirements from the smaller programs and allows them to focus on the research activities. So international collaboration is another big theme right now for DMR. So which regions, you know, EU, India, China, are, are most important to the DMR and why? So I don't think there's any particular re region that's of, of importance. I think all of, it, all of them are important, right? I think when we look at where materials research and science and engineering development is now being done, it's done on a global basis. Right? So I think one of the goals of DMR is to help prepare future scientists, future engineers to actually be ready to participate in that kind of work environment. And so the programs we have within DMR to promote international collaborations, and we have several in, in that vein, uh, are designed to help bridge that gap and help sort of get the students prepared so that they're ready to participate in that environment. There's, there's a lot of talk at MRS this week about, uh, about public outreach. W what, it, what is the DMR doing to promote outreach and knowledge transfer? So we have several activities. They range from single investigator activities. All of our centres, all of our teams 
are engaged in outreach activities of one form or another. These may be bringing in high school students to spend a day in the lab. It may be bringing in a, a high school student to spend a summer in a group. We also bring in high school teachers so that they get research experiences and they can take those back to the class and hopefully incorporate what they learn in, in their lesson plans. It's partly how do you spread the word about material science. The other activities that we're engaged in, we do have exhibits or science that ends up in the, in the museums. A, most, a recent one is one that's up in the Chicago Museum and that's on granular flow. Very interesting exhibit and worth, worth going to see. Uh, so we, we are heavily engaged in outreach activities over the entire division. So one, one final question, time for a bit of crystal ball gazing. If you had to predict the next big thing in material science over the ne next decade, what, what would it be? This is, so I don't have a crystal ball, right? <laughs> so this is actually a hard one. But I think if you're looking for a very broad themed area that is going to impact all of material science, I think it's how we bring in computational material science, com computational simulations, and integrate that with all processes of material science. So we're going to see it integrated with synthesis and processing, where we're going to use the computational tools to actually help select the materials that we should synthesize. We're going to see it help us interpret experimental data because the data sets and the experiments are getting too complicated. We need help from, from the simulations to interpret the results. And I think if we look, can we actually build models that will predict performance of materials by, by multi-scaling all of these things together. These are big challenges, but I think in the next five to 10 years, we're, we're going to see breakthroughs in that area. My feeling is it's going to impact not just one area of material science, but the entire field. Sounds like interesting times ahead. It sounds like a very interesting time to be heading to NSF, and I'm looking forward to, to starting there in January. Great stuff. Th thanks for joining us, Ian. Well, thank you.